um, one thing I'm gonna say, I was gonna say is, um, I'm bringing more this presentation to the to the work that we've been doing in Brazil for the uh, for the World Bank, um, and that's I think the overview on the importance of NCDs and the global aspect and digital uh, uh, inno innovations and how it affects has been said, and I think many other people are gonna say about this. I think the point here is to bring the, the work that has been done in Brazil is to, to emphasize how the points we discussed before are even more important in the context of chronic disease. Um, and, and the other aspect of this, can you change the next slide please? And the other aspect of this is for the World Bank, uh, the work on, on not only on the SDGs, but specific on chronic disease, um, means uh, um, strengthening uh, uh, health systems and in, in particular uh, uh, universal health coverage. So, and that's the context. I, I, I'm going to put some words on, on the work we have been doing in Brazil and how much I think this work is, is relevant for, for, for the discussion about primary health care, sorry, about chronic disease. And there is one aspect um, that I think I take from Guy the colleague who presented this before me when he mentioned about the UHC, I think in the context of Brazil, but I think in the global context is, is one certainly UHC, but the second is the, the role of primary health care in this discussion. And I think the work we've been doing in Brazil showed this very, very clearly. And that's my, my intention here to discuss that. But next, please. Um, so first one, brief overview, so like, as Many of you know the World Bank uh, uh, actions and, uh, and both technical assistance but also uh, finance. It has two objectives. One is end, end poverty by 2030 and the other is uh, uh, promote share prosperity, which means increasing living standards of the bottom 40% of the population. And those two goals cross, cut across different SDGs. Um, and as I said before, on the, the board you can see the three aspects of it, one is, is systems, yeah? of course, in our case here, health system, but we also work in, in, in social safety nets uh, and different systems that uh, uh, support the poor and the bottom 40% of the income distribution. We also talk about, uh, uh, focus on, on affordability, quality, and access, equitable access. And one aspect of the bank is also is multi-sectoriality. Yeah? The, the, the possibility of having cross sector actions from sanitation to taxation, which includes micro fiscal uh, analysis for health, for education, social protection. I think also uh, those are important in the context we are discussing here the chronic disease. Next, please. Um, so, on that aspect, we have a few reports that have been discussed, there are many others. I think one thing that's important in this context, what the guy just mentioned about the human capital we also have work uh, on human capital it's been guiding some of our operations and as he said it's critical to consider um, chronic disease also there is i like very much the presentation from macario the ministry of health that shows some of not only the data but also some actions from the ministry of health and this 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 aspect of the chronic disease are important for us also. and again related to what i said before in terms of the 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 poverty and share prosperity, because you know the poor, as Macari showed, uh, they are more affected by uh, um, chronic disease. We have evidence from Brazil saying those people with chronic disease have three times more uh, chance to not engage in the usual activity. So it means there is a social gradient here, uh, and with the same applies for obesity and the access to to health food. You know, so I think all these aspects have some uh, links and some direct links with the, uh, the object of the World Bank in terms of poverty and share prosperity. Um, okay, next please. So that's what I mentioned. No? We have focus, focus first on, 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 on systems. And there's two things that's important in the discussion in Brazil now, which one is the coverage. But also, I, I go beyond this uh, effective coverage. Brazil has a universal health coverage since the 1980s. 
but we start to discuss now about effective coverage, which also includes quality of care, and one is the financial protection. And again, those are going to both going to have an impact on what they're going to say about the link of chronic disease. Next, please. <clears throat> Yeah, this is just, I think my colleague from WHO also showed some monitoring of the chronic disease, the SDGs. We have this partnership with WHO to measure uh, the the um, key indicators in terms of uh, um, universal health coverage. Uh, this is just an example to show the kind of work we've been done at the global level. And, and some of them we, we break down within the counters, like it. For instance, not related to the SDGs, but the work on human capital we, was done uh, across the county. And now we are doing uh, subnational analysis of human capital. And as I said, this has a, a component, to say, is a direct link with the discussion on chronic disease. The next, please. So going more uh, straight to the discussion about Brazil, I think what I put here is uh, what's the, the challenge for the, for the Brazilian health systems? And the, the, my, my main point here is to how to bring those challenges and how relevant they are for the discussion on chronic disease, especially if you think in terms of strengthening uh, health systems, achieving universal health coverage, and having the primary health care uh, uh, service delivery as a key to address this challenge. Uh, next, please. So we can go very quick here, you know, the, the achievements of Swiss you know, in the last now 31 years, how much uh, have improvement in, 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 in key health indicators. Another aspect that's important, as I said before, for the work we're doing in universal health coverage is the uh, financial protection. We know uh, Brazil has one of the lowest uh, uh, um, um, percentage of people incurring catastrophic expenditures which means the health system is protecting people and especially protecting the poor. Next, please. Um, so we know uh, also that the public spending in Brazil benefits most of the poor. You, know, you see here for the income in times, and we know the poor, you know, the bottom income in times, 90% depends on, on, on public service to access health service. Uh, so that means we are achieving the, the objective of being uh, 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 distributional uh, object, you know, the taking resources from the society and benefiting those with higher needs or with lower capacity to pay. Those are the, the achievements that we all know about. So, I think you're going to see later this as implication of the discussion of chronic disease, given that those, uh, those, uh, uh, that part of the population depends on, on, on Swiss to affect services. Next, please. So, I mean, this is not directly linked to the discussion here, but I think I was good to mention that we have also some inequalities in the, in the distribution of the results. And one is the tax expenditure with uh, the, the tax break given to, to, to different um, parts of the private sector involved in the, in the health service delivery. Um, 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 as I said, this doesn't have a direct impact on on the discussion on chronic disease, you know, but it does have an impact when you discuss about the intersection between public and private. Uh, next, please. Yeah, so I, I, I listed a few challenges, and, and again, I hope you can see this through the lens of the discussion in terms of chronic disease. The first one is we all know, and everybody who discussed about Swiss in the last 30 years, is about the finance. We know the this, this, we always say that uh, uh, the public spend is low uh, uh, compared to other accounts, compared to the, the, the Latin America peers, to structural peers, not even to say compared to ICD accounts. The next, please. So the discussion in the last three years has been very much focused on, on how much we spend on health, but we know also that we have another challenge. Next, please. And one challenge is the, the fiscal situation we have in Brazil over the last uh, five years or more. Uh, we, we, we know that um, some, some measures have been, take, have been taken in the last years, such as the, the pension reform, the, the fiscal sailing, all this. But just to emphasize, we have a, a challenge here and, and, and balance between higher needs and, um, and the and fiscal limitations. Next, please. 
yeah, and that uh, um, shows also the prospects of the future. In the past, we know the exp public expenditure has been uh, growing faster than, than, than GDP growth, which puts uh, a sustainability challenge. But you know also in the future, is expected to grow even faster and faster than compared to what expected, given the fiscal uh, sailing uh, road. I think this is an important point for the discussing chronic disease because we know the chronic disease is going to increase uh, expenditures, not only in, in, in intensity, but also in the duration of the expenditure. And especially in the situation that you know, also, there is a, a, a demographic transition in Brazil. So when we discuss about chronic disease in this context, we do need to discuss about sustainability of health systems. And I, I just saw in this morning, I have a study in the, I think the WHO study actually on, on the cost of uh, um, uh, impact, the impact of treating chronic disease on the GDP, and they, they estimate about 0.5% of GDP growth due to, to chronic disease and on, in terms of GDP per capita 0.7%. So there is a, 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 for one side, for the health system side, there is economic cost of, of chronic disease, but that was, with raise the issue of sustainability, but also there is an economic cost in terms of treating and preventing chronic disease, which are considerably high. Uh, um, next, please. Okay, another challenge here is the, the, the quality issue. You know, the Swiss and the public sector has been uh, raised or has been uh, evaluated and assessed. Is lower quality. Here we have two uh, of ever four Brazilian assess the system as uh, um, bad or too bad. Or, uh, um, and also we have here the different aspects of why this assessment is so low. Um, uh, I think one of the key aspects here of this low uh, assessment, you're going to see a bit later here, is the access to service. You know? You know, people wait for service. You know, for instance, for, for especially talking again, chronic disease, I think you all know, uh, if you talk about cancer, you know, we, we have well documented uh, uh, the delays in the treatment and, and how to access the treatment and how it affects the, the, the results, the outcome. But you're going to come back to this in a while. Uh, next, please. You know, uh, uh, fragmentation, we've been discussing this a few times in the past, but I think. This is an important point I'm going to make here is that we we know the service delivery in the public sector in Brazil is very much on the on the on the municipal uh, municipality um, 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 is a municipality responsibility, and at the same time we know the most of the Brazilian municipalities are, they are very small, small at least. So and and for those municipalities the challenges have a, a scale of service. And the scale of service means quality, but also means efficiency. The next, please. Dr. Edson, faltam well, three minutes. Eu vi a mensagem. Obrigado, Bruno. So the point here again is, I mean, if you're talking about system, you talk about primary health care, we can't ignore the challenge of uh, provide service in such a small scale that we have it across Brazil and municipal. Next, please. So we know also that we spend, uh, uh, we don't spend much, as I said at the beginning, but we spend also probably very wrong. Uh, one of the uh, analysis we have done in the bank in Brazil is to show how much more efficient the primary health care is compared to, to hospital care and ambulatory and inpatient and outpatient care. Uh, we spend about 16% on primary health care while we spend more than 40% in, in hospital care and ambulatory service which has a, a, a lower results, if you think, in terms of efficiency. But I come back to that next, please. So I have the channel of, of, of uh, health labor markets. I don't to spend talk much about this. But I mean, we, we are seeing this, the COVID situation, how this problem has been uh, uh, exacerbated. But that's not only Brazil, it's a, it's a global problem. Next, please. So we have the issue of, of management, and here it's, it's important to, to highlight the public and private uh, uh, challenge in Brazil, the public-private divide. We've discussed for years the use of not-for-profit uh, organizations, 
but more and more we need to think about the, the inclusion of private uh, uh, providers and different private sector actors in the provision of service and to achieve better quality and better uh, efficiency. And I think the indicators here speak for themselves. Next, please. Uh, so, those are the summary of the challenges. I think those relate directly to the discuss of, of uh, uh, chronic disease. So, what have been done in Brazil? What's the challenge that to have a more uh, 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 to have a stronger role of primary health care? Uh, next, please. So, first, uh, from the analysis I have done in the past in the last few years, we show that significant amount of the uh, uh, let's say avoidable uh, expense so they 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 could be reduced if um i need just one minute more bruna if they could be reduced if more with stronger primary health care uh, uh service you know, and the graph on, on on the right shows very clearly there is a gradient there's some variation but there's a clear gradient and this 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 number if you take it only 2016 was over 2 billion reais. if you take 2018 was over 2.5 billion so it's there's a significant amount of, of results being being let's say wasted because we haven't invested as much on, on, on primary health care. And if you see on the graph on the on the left, you see many of those uh, 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 inpatient care for for chronic disease, so related to chronic disease. Next, please. Um, so as I said before, one of the main challenges for SUIS, and that's why we have low uh, evaluation from the public, is the difficult to access service. You know? And you know from the work you have done that a more efficient service provision network would increase the access to service by five times on average uh, uh, in Brazil. You know? There are differences across regions, of course, across the states and municipalities, but that's the average. And so we have the results to improve that. And, and again, as I said before, if you think about cancer, think about other chronic disease, uh, this is uh, very relatable. Next, please. So one key aspect we have here to have a, a primary health care, a stronger primary health care that can play a stronger role, not only in service delivery in general, but specifically on chronic disease, is the issue we have in coverage and enrollment in primary health care. I think one of the key reforms we have in, in, in the SUS over the last years was the, the change of the finance mechanism. And uh, um, I think some of you know about that, but the, the key aspect of the change was to enroll uh, uh, people in primary health care and make that the, the transfer from the federal government, which is about uh, 10 billion has a year only for, for the enrollment, change for per capita base to the enrollment base, which means people need to be enrolled in primary health care teams, so the municipalities and the teams receive the, the capitation uh, transfer. That's a big change because as you see here on the graph on the, on the left, you know, with the green bars and the orange bars, you see there's a difference between cadastro, which is um, um, uh, uh, enrollment and, and coverture, of course, coverage. And and that coverage, it's both coverage and cadastro lower and the higher larger municipalities. Those are the one now with probably with higher uh, uh, percentage of people with chronic disease. And I think everybody knows here, but just want to mention this: this financing chain is key because with this uh, make, making making a role compulsory and making a role linked to the finance to the payment the municipalities and health team receive means they're going to have a more uh, longitudinal uh, follow-up of patient, management of patient, uh, coordination of care, all these things that we know they're important for chronic disease. So I think this is, is really important to, to highlight the change that was done in the last year, has been implemented from January. And I think that's the first step to have a more efficient <coughs> uh, 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 management of chronic patient in Brazil, including the, what um, Anne said at the beginning, about uh, digital evolution, how to use technology to, to monitor uh, uh, manage patients. And next, please. <clears throat> so I, this is just uh, to highlight two reports that World Bank have done in the last years in Brazil about the first and diagnosis of the challenges. And of course, we have the specific on, on chronic disease, but also some on reforms. And they are both available on the World Bank site. Thank you. Uh, I can go next, please. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I 
finish here, but again, the, the central point I think I want to make here is uh, we have challenges in this in the service delivery network in Brazil. Of course, I'm talk most about the public sector, but we those also can apply to private sector. But one key aspect, or at least can say two aspects. One, we need to make it stronger and stronger primary health care service. And, and one positive aspect of the Brazilian network is that we have this uh, we have this network of primary health care facilities across the country, more than 42,000 primary health care uh, uh, centers, equips actually. So, which means we have the framework to make it happen, you know, in terms of uh, introduce gatekeeping, the finance has been changed already, some additional resources have been put in primary health care, of course, we need more. We need, as my colleague said, in, uh, uh, use more technology uh, at primary health care for case management and, and follow up patients. So, this is one, you know, uh, make primary health care stronger. And a few steps have been done, not only over the last 30 years, but also in the last year or so. The second one is the integration with, with the private sector. You know? Um, you, I put here a South Fermentar, private, but of course this includes all the industrial complex of salud, of health, and, and that integration also with private sector is key because um, we know there are different access, different in terms of quality, in terms of payments, in terms of co-payments, etc. So this integration within the system, within different providers, having the primary health care as a coordinator, but also with the private sector is key if you think about sustainability and quality and of course both are going to uh, influence the access and again we all know how access to chronic uh, disease treatment is going to be key is already key you know from the nice background notes that we received it shows the numbers are already speak for themselves in terms of the importance of it but it's key to look at the health system as, as it's try to to make it in this in this field into how integration coordination within the public sector but also for the private sector is key for, for achieving this uh, sustainability quality and access uh, results uh, i finished here sorry if i took more of the time and again sorry for the challenge with the technology but over thank you <laughs>